everyone, welcome back to KC 3D Sparks. Today we are going to be getting back into our tavern and inn series. Hopefully you are ready to jump in to creating some of the kitchen furniture. I thought we'd take a little break from the inn part and maybe step over to the kitchen. I thought it'd be neat to make a large cook fire with a kettle boiling over it. Um, that way, you know, we can start getting some of our stuff ready for Thanksgiving in a couple weeks here. So. First things first, you kind of want to make sure you have the size that you want. So I'm going to make mine um, just about two inches by one inch. So it'll fill up one of these squares or two of these squares. Of course, you know, you can make it much larger. This is a bigger room. So I could even do just that size and then have two of them in separate spots, that kind of thing. So just, you know, keep in mind what size you want to go for. My grid and everything, I have my units set to inches. So my grid is set to quarter of an inch. So make sure you select whatever unit you want to work in. I'm going to work in inches and I'm going to hop over to an empty layer here. I'm going to do shift A mesh cube is what I'd like to start working with. And before we tab into edit mode, I want to set up these dimensions. So like I said, I want to do about two inches and one inch. And let's just start with a quarter of an inch for this. We can always make it smaller or larger depending on how we feel. I'm going to tab into edit mode. We're going to deselect everything with A, control R to add a loop, just left click, right click. Deselect, Z for wireframe view, border select that edge, X to delete those vertices. We're just gonna go hop over to our modifiers tab here and add a mirror modifier. Don't forget to check clipping and then if you feel like it, you can check and make sure that it is perfect there. For this cook fire, the reason I'm starting with this rectangular shape is this is going to be the base. So this will outline and have the stones on the edge. And then in the center, we can have the actual fire itself. Poles can be staked at either end with the, uh, another pole going across the top. And then we'll hang our kettle or not our kettle, but our uh, cauldron from the center. So, all right. So to set up the stones, what I'm going to do get out of wireframe view. I'm going to just select this top face here. I'm going to hit E to extrude and then escape. And I'm just going to size that in. I'm going to hit seven to go into top view. I uh, want well, a little thick, maybe about there. Yeah, probably about there looks good. So I'm going to go into front view, E to extrude, hit Z for wireframe and just pull that down to about there. So you still have a little bit of depth there. Now for the stones, I'm going to do control R and I'm going to hit S X zero to get that completely straight. And then that one's already completely straight. So we'll just add that one. Control R, add a loop here, control R about there. S X zero, pull that in some more. Pull that out just so you have a little bit there. And this will set up our grout lines for the stones and then we'll fix it up in sculpt mode. This is just to basically get it, oops, I don't need that one. All set up. Out there. Okay, so now what we can do is go ahead and grab these center lines here. Go into front view and I'm going to bring it almost halfway down. You can bring it further if you want. But I think about there looks good. Cool. And if you want it, you could start just adding in geometry to add in some deviations and um, just details for the stone and you can add a subdivision mo modifier and all kinds of stuff. For me, I'm just going to go into sculpt mode. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and tab out of edit mode. I'm going to duplicate this just so I have that base to um, return to in case if I go too far and I can't control Z far enough. Apply my mirror modifier, go into sculpt mode. And if you haven't been uh, to my video about the sculpting tools. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into this, but uh, just know that I do have a sculpting tutorial out there. 
you'll want to pick out the brush you want to use. So typically I'll just go ahead and use this sculpt draw because I don't use sculpting too much. So this is kind of like the default anyway. Um, and then for me, I'm going to go ahead and select this. So it adds in geometry as I'm sculpting. So I don't have to worry about having enough there. And also I'm going to go ahead and leave on the symmetry lock for X. So when we start modeling, you'll notice it works on the other side. So it's basically the mirror modifier. I'm just going to undo that and I'm probably going to do Y as well. So I only have to model this one corner. Obviously, if you want yours to be a little bit more unique than that, you can leave the mirrors off and just have it uh, go sculpt each stone individually. But I'm trying to just go a little bit faster. So I'm just going to do that. And don't forget about the strength and radius of your brush as well. Um, so I'm just going to speed through this. So you guys don't have to watch me sculpt some stones because you've done that a few times before. And I will see you guys in a second. Okay, so I'm happy with that shape. I think that looks pretty good. Um, as you saw, I kind of went in and added this uh, section here to make it look like this corner was kind of chopped off to create more of an L joint or something like that. Obviously, the correct fix would probably be to just go back to the actual model itself, have this stone or this one extend all the way out instead of having that joint at the exact corner and pulling it down. But, you know, I'm committed now, so I'm just going to leave it as is and roll with it. So let's go ahead and go back to object mode. We'll leave this as is. We're going to come back to sculpting later to do the actual fire part. But I want to model the fire around the cauldron. thought that might be kind of cool looking. So let's go ahead and I, we are going to use some Boolean modifiers. So let's go ahead to Shift A, Mesh, Mesh and cylinder we'll start with this for the actual poles that are holding the cauldron up um we're gonna knock this down to eight vertices i think that'll be pretty good and then make sure yep that's so that's triangle fan that will work out pretty well um and i'm gonna come over to the dimensions over here for x let's go ahead and do 0.15 y will be the same and Z, we're going to have at 1.25 and see how that looks. Because we need a little bit extra to sink into it to be Boolean together. And I want it to intersect a little bit with the stones themselves so it'll print nice and sturdy for us so that looks pretty good it's wedged in there nicely um i am gonna add a subdivision modifier surface modifier but not quite yet what i'm gonna do first is go on a front view we're gonna shift d just escape rotate 90. we're just gonna grab that put it about there i think that looks good I'm going to have this kind of line up with down there, so pull this over to be just over that grid line. Looks good. So what we'll do is select this one, add modifier, boolean, union, select this cylinder, hit apply. So now we can go ahead and just hide that one. Tab into edit mode to make sure that I applied properly which it did. There's nothing extra in there. Perfect. Now we can add modifier mirror and you'll notice that it's wrong. It's mirroring in here. That's because our origin point is over here. So let's just X out of that. Tab back into edit mode, set origin, 
origin to 3D cursor. So our origin's right there in the center. Go back, we can do our mirror modifier, add clipping, switch to vertex select mode, pull this, perfect. We can also add our subdivision surface modifier, which is going a little crazy right now, but that's fine. What we can do, control R, SC0, that up, whoops, shift E to sharpen that, SX0, pull that in, sharpen that, whoops. So you can pick if you like the actual triangles for sharpen or the circles. I think because of the joint, I don't notice too much of a difference. It's pretty subtle. I'll probably just leave it as is. Um, so I'll just do that. Control R. I'm going to add another loop here just to draw that out instead of sharpening that edge. So it's a little bit more defined. And for the bottom, what I'm going to do is just control R, pull that all the way down and sharpen just to be sure our Boolean works as best as it can. So we'll leave that for now. Let's go ahead and just hide. So we're going to do name this stand so we know what that is. And actually we can go ahead and just delete that. We don't need that anymore. Let's go ahead and we'll just hide these. Let's make our cauldron really quick. So mesh, I like to start with a circle. This, uh, we'll go ahead and leave it 12. Radius, I'm not going to mess with too much. Let's just change it down to half an inch. We'll focus in on that. And then fill type, we'll do N-Gon. And we'll tab into edit mode. Go into front view, focus in on it. We're going to hit E to extrude and see which way the normals are. So we'll want to extrude up this way. If you went down that way, you'll notice that's all dark and weird. Um, you'll want to make sure the normals are facing the right way. So we'll go up this way. Pull this way down. And if you want, you can create a small base. Since this cauldron is only going to be meant for like hanging on that hole, I'm not going to worry about making an actual base. I'm going to have it a little bit curvier than that. So like it's never meant to sit on a floor or anything. It'll still have this little bit of flat bottom, but the fire will probably be covering it anyway. So that's why I'm also not going to really worry about having a base there. So need to extrude again, size that way out, need to extrude, pretty much pull that just up, size that in about there, need to extrude, pull it up some. that in, up, and down. All right, so what I want to do, I think I hit end gun instead of triangle fan. Oops, uh, I did. That's not what I meant to do. Let me go ahead and just delete that face. I'm going to E to extrude, size that in, E to extrude, all M at center. And same with this one. I'm going to delete that face and we'll fill that in in just a second. All right, we're going to do subdivision surface modifier. Surprise, surprise. Go to the front. I want to select this with Alt right click, Shift E, sharpen that. Check out the shape of the cauldron. See how it looks. Definitely need this a little bit thicker, so I'm going to grab that and just pull that down, be a little bit more dramatic, and I'll pull this up. I like that better. Um, and you can also add, add uh, handles and stuff to the side. I'm not going to worry about that, again, because it's not something that's going to be lifted up. We're just going to worry about the big like handle that actually hangs the pot itself. So let's tab into edit mode. We're going to go to side view. And we'll want that right here. I think I'm going to Boolean that on instead to make it look nicer instead of trying to do it the proper way. 
uh, we're gonna cheat a little bit like we usually like to so that way we can just quickly model and move on with our lives all right so grab this inner circle here if you want it so there's a couple options you could do the first one is to kind of mirror and do another cauldron on the inside so that way it's just empty if you wanted an empty cauldron i want one that looks like it has some soup in there or whatever you want cooking so i'm gonna do e to extrude i'm just gonna size that in a little bit and you pull it down some more e to extrude size that in pull it up size that in pull it back down up Oh, and at center. This one shouldn't be as dramatic. I can rotate them a little bit to make it look. A little bit more visually interesting you know nothing crazy um, oh and you'll definitely want to make sure you have the loop selected sharpen that edge yeah that looks better now I also kind of want a spoon handle sticking out of that so that'll be really easy to boolean in let's worry about the actual handle itself first I'm gonna do shift a mesh the shape i'm looking for is kind of a torus shape but i don't want that hole in the center so we're going to go ahead and just select uv sphere we're going to go into side view and we're going to hit align to view so we don't have to worry about rotating it it'll just already be in somewhat the correct orientation um and we can leave the segments as is that way we don't have to worry about subdividing it at all this will be perfect so let's tap into edit mode we're gonna grab this vertice and this vertice and we can go to connect it for proportional editing and size that in and notice the circle's way too small. We're gonna to wanna to up that. Maybe not that dramatic. Maybe more like that. Uh, make sure they're not touching. They aren't touching. Perfect. So go back into object view. I'm gonna size that down. Grab that, it's still way too big, size that down. I'm gonna rotate it, grab it, and sink it in. You size it up a little bit. We do need it somewhat exaggerated, so you can actually see it once you print it out. Maybe something like that. Looks pretty good. And then what we'll want to do is tab into edit mode and make sure, actually we'll have to turn this off first, make sure that, you know, nothing's going to happen with this. Make sure it cuts perfectly, which it will. So I just moved those two vertices, so the Boolean modifier will definitely work. All right. Now I'm going to make sure I like the direction. I'm gonna rotate it just a little bit like that to kind of parallel these lines a little bit. I mean, obviously this one's curved, but just trying to get that there. And I'm gonna smooth that just to make it match a little bit. Now what we can do is Shift D to duplicate that. We're gonna move that to the other side and then we can tab into edit mode, select everything, Control M, X, Enter, and then just pull that back. Now you'll notice when I did that, the normals flipped. See how it's dark and shaded weird? So what we'll have to do is go over here, open that menu with N, and you can even double check when you're in object mode, you can have the normals pointing. And you'll see the lines are all facing inward. So yeah, they're definitely wrong. So what you wanna do is select everything with A. You can hit the space bar. Just start typing in normals, whoops if you can spell it right and hit flip normals and that will fix it for you 
So now that our normals are correct, we can add the actual hoop. Now for the handle, let's go ahead and do shift A and we're gonna do a cylinder again. Leave it at eight, that's fine. Uh, well, you can crank it up to 12, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Let's just do S, shift Z. Size it down. Hmm, about probably there. Let's go in a side view, probably easier to look at. Like that looks good. Okay. So now we have that. What I'm doing is I'm just going to pull that down to there. So it has that and then it'll have a sharp edge. So when we bring it up, it'll be like I have a crease there like it was bent into that. So that way when they do decide to take the cauldron off, this kind of pops out. Or at least that's how I'm imagining it anyway. And then we have plenty of extra for when we boolean it together. So it'll make a nice seam there. Let's have it edit mode. Just grab this loop and don't forget this right there as well. E to extrude, we're just going to pull that up, rotate that, grab that, rotate it around, more like that. E to extrude, rotate it a little bit, E to extrude, rotate it, pull it up, like that. Let's add our subdivision surface modifier. See how that looks. That's a little bit of a weird shape. Let's add a loop here. Grab that, pull that up. Pull this one in. Okay, so let's go ahead and select everything. Um, for some reason, I couldn't get the mirror modifier to work for this. I don't know why. Something probably with the origin, but whatever. So what I'm just going to do is Shift D, pull that over, just like we did with this. Control M, X, Enter, and then just flip the normals. And pull that over. And make it intersect right there. And what we can do, we'll have to delete these two X vertices, and then we can just merge these. Go back into front view. You can Change the shape of that, see how you like it. Oh, and I wanted to do, let's do another cylinder. Well, let's crank this up to 30, that works. Tab into edit mode, control R, size that down, pull that down. And we can size it. I think I like that size, maybe a little smaller, but this is just like the wooden spoon handle sticking out. So I'm going to rotate that, just get like a, maybe pull, pull it to the front. And the side view, rotate it that way. And then, oh, we're definitely sticking out of the soup there. So let's just pull that down.
And then we make sure it's intersecting all the way around, which it definitely seems to be. Let me pull it in a little bit. Yep, that'll work nicely. What we can do is grab this one. We will rename it. Um, you can duplicate if you want. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I have other cauldrons that I could always use. So I'm just going to apply this and then we'll need Boolean union and we need one, two, three, four. So first we'll do the spoon and we can do that. Oops. Not that. That sphere. Hide those. We can apply those. And then our cylinder. Tab in edit mode. Make sure everything applied properly. Which it looks like they did. Perfect. Um, one thing I forgot to do that I usually like to do before I add booleans is go into object, apply, rotation, and scale. I guess not always totally necessary, but definitely kind of recommended. I'm going to unhide our cook fire and the stand and see how they size. Like, pull this up, go into top view. We're going to rotate this 90 degrees. Pull it down so that intersects right there. Looks pretty good. Oh, I like it. Now, of course, if you left your cauldron empty, you could uh, just have some mounds or something or some logs to make it look like that the fire was put out and, you know, they haven't been cooking for the night or if it's an abandoned place, something like that. Since my inn is going to be active and running, I want to go ahead and add in a fire. So I'm not going to apply any of the bullions or anything. I guess I could for the cauldron and here, but just in case I decide to change this um, cylinder up top, for the handle. I'm not going to apply them yet. So let's go ahead. We're going to select our actual cook fire, which is the bottom. And we're going to go back into, actually, you know what? Let's duplicate that. Hide that. So this will be the version with the fire itself. And we can go into sculpt mode. Now, obviously our settings have stayed perfect. So for fires, typically I will use sculpt draw, as you saw um, in my fast forward version for the stone, I mainly use sculpt draw and smooth. I use a little bit of inflate, not too much. For fire, I definitely use the sculpt draw and snake hook. Snake hook's the big one, and then I'll definitely use smoothing out a little bit too, like deflate. So pretty much stick to the same one, but I mainly uh, add in our snake hook. So. I'll grab this one first to kind of get our base. And then once I get the actual flame tongues coming out, I'll grab snake hook. So again, I'm just going to fast forward since I've shown how to make fire before. Um, I'll either fast forward or skip over it since, you know, it, depending on how long it takes. But I'll see you guys in a second. All right, well, I think you guys get the gist of it. So, I mean, I could spend hours just perfecting the flames on this. Um, I don't want to go too crazy. Obviously, <laughs> I think it's a little late for that, actually. Um, the flames are really high up on this cauldron, but I kind of like it. It's a little bit uh, scary looking, actually. So, you don't have to make your flames nearly as dramatic as I did, but you do want to make sure that if you're bullying everything together and you're not going to print the parts separately, 
um, you'll want to make sure that your sculpt oh my gosh this is so dense it's kind of hard to see but basically just like any other time when you're bullying stuff together you have um, a perfect seam you don't have any holes or anything like that you'll want to make sure wherever the fire does touch the cauldron or for some reason you have it touching the metal poles or the stone or anything like that you'll want to make sure that it is a perfect seam oh well with the stones I mean it's the same sculpture so it'll sculpt right into it, it doesn't matter but if anything that you're bullying together you will want to make sure it touches it perfectly and has it in there all together so just make sure you have all that covered when you do go to bully in it. You probably don't want to leave any extras sticking out like that. Uh, you could, but I'll probably end up getting rid of that real quick. Um, so, I mean, let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me see what uh, you guys have come up with. Let me see your interpretations. I'd love to get any feedback back as well. And I'll see you guys next week.